welcome back everyone. You're listening to K-pop with Kyla, aka K Talks, where we talk every aspect of K-pop together. I'm your host Kyla and I'm joined by today's co-host Shams. Today we will be talking about the limiting and the exhausting beauty standards in the K-pop industry. Shams is also a K-pop fan like me and I feel very lucky to have her here. Hi Shams, how are you doing? Hi Kyla. I'm doing good. I'm excited to join you in this podcast episode. Well, I'm very happy to hear that you're good. Well, today me and Shams will be talking about the beauty standards in K-pop. There are a lot of associations with K-pop such as the passion to dance and sing, but unfortunately, beauty standards aren't one of these admirable sides of K-pop. I want to ask my co-host what comes to her mind when she thinks of quote unquote the K-pop beauty and K-pop in general as someone who's interested in this industry. When I think about K-pop, the first couple of words that might pop into my mind and maybe others minds are talent, beauty, cuteness, all-rounders, addiction even. But if you compare the K-pop industry right now, fourth generation, with the generations before, The whole world of K-pop changed from its strategies and priorities in marketing. And let's talk in depth about these topics. So, K-pop groups or K-pop idols in general in the previous generation would go viral and famous because of their amazing vocals, dancing, rapping, and other skills. And their looks would be the plus in their image. But now, K-pop industries care about giving the idol the perfect look and image from the size, constructing a fake personality, even faking their tone of voice when they speak, and then having their talents as a plus. So basically, these companies lost a big portion of passion when it comes to creating music. This is because they noticed that If you look good, you're more successful, and if you fit the fans' preferences and standards, you make more money. Yeah, also now with the role of media, the criteria for becoming famous has changed completely, as you also mentioned. I have been listening to K-pop for over seven years now, and I remember that idols used to go viral for their vocals mostly, but now the vocals aren't even cared for. Unless you are very skinny and have glassy skin, it's almost impossible to go viral. Yeah, unfortunately, it is that way. So the part we will talk about in detail that relates to the gender and media course is about the beauty standards and how much they suffer behind closed doors to reach unrealistic standards and even fabricate personalities. So let's start with one of the most expected things, diets and body sizes. The K-pop industry sets absolutely absurd standards for their idols, starving them and punishing them if they go over a certain weight, which, by the way, is always below average and unhealthy. And it applies to both male and female idols. When it comes to female idols, they want a girl who is 46 kilos or less, long legs, skinny waist, and a cute face. If any idol, quote, gains weight, She gets fat shamed like crazy by people online. I would call them fans, but that behavior is disgusting, obviously. We have examples of this happening. We have an idol named Liz in a girl group called Ive. She recently gained a normal amount of weight from being previously extremely underweight. And the reaction from the netizens was so sad to see. They kept shaming her, saying that she is now very ugly does not fit the idol look and comments stuff like oh you need to lose seven more kilos oh you shouldn't eat much now you have to lose weight which is so sad she is just a human and she's a teenager it is very pressuring and sometimes they don't directly body shame her but they use passive aggressive ways to do it for example during the time Liz gained weight I saw videos titled like K-pop idols who look good while being overweight and fat. Like some people actually feel like they are complimenting them by saying this, which is totally insane for me actually. It shows how strongly these unhealthy beauty standards are imprinted in their minds. And by making videos like this, they are just popularizing this insane unhealthy mindset. 
There are a lot of idols on this list, unfortunately. One of them is Jonghyun from TWICE, which is like one of the most famous girl groups worldwide. You might know them from songs like Feel Special, TT and Signal, they're probably like most famous songs. Shams, can you tell us what happened with Jonghyun? Yes, she had surgery and took a break from all group activities to recover, of course. And when she came back, genuinely, nobody was saying stuff about them being glad that she's back. Just commenting about how, quote, fat and big she became. It's so sad that even though they know this person went through surgery and needed time to recover and get all the rest she needed, they still decided to body shame her. We also want to let you guys know that it is not only pressuring for women, the male idols also go through a lot. For example, Jimin of BTS. He would always get comments regarding his size that he had a diet where he would only have one meal per fortnight. And there are some clips you can look up. All the members would be celebrating a birthday and Jimin would be so hesitant to take a bite of the cake, eventually not eating any cake at all. Also, Changbin from Stray Kids. He was made fun of during a variety show because of his visuals, and slowly after, he started working out and getting buff. And in order for him and anyone who bulks up, he would eat more protein and other foods to keep the muscle. But the people would just call him pig. So it's a situation where no matter what they do and how they look, they would get backlash. Not only does this terribly impact their mental health and give them body image issues, this also negatively impact the K-pop fans watching these, making themselves also want to go to extreme diets and lose a dangerous amount of weight. I myself personally felt like I should lose some weight to look at least 1% like them. I thought that if I lost weight, I would be happier and prettier and more liked. Especially young K-pop fans normally can't separate themselves from all these comments about how K-pop idols should look like. Since they see these people as their mentors, they even think being underweight is normal. They unfortunately start treating their bodies very badly. This includes using acids that will damage the skin just to get a glowy look, just to get the quote-unquote the Korean beautiful skin. Getting surgery around ages like 14 and 15, which is totally unhealthy. Starvation and many more ways of destroying the body. This industry normalizes dangerous habits so much that it actually becomes a life or death situation. Especially for trainees, aka people who are training to be K-pop idols, they are pressuring themselves to stay skinny. Fitting KBS, which is the Korean beauty standard, became the criteria to debut, not talent or whatsoever. For example, at one of their performances, Huwasa, who is a member of a girl group called Mamamoo, said that they rejected her because she didn't fit into the Korean beauty standard, while also acknowledging her unique and strong voice. There are many examples like this that can lead one to suffer from body dysmorphia. Since being underweight became the first and the most important step to debut, people feel like the only chance they have to achieve their dreams is through deadly habits. Can you give us an example for it, Shams? One of the stories that really affected people was the story that Momo, a member of TWICE, she shared that during her days as a trainee, in order to stay skinny, she would only eat one ice cube per day. And she said, I was really scared to sleep and never wake up, which is really heartbreaking because it is obvious that she isn't doing it by her own free will, but because she doesn't want to get in trouble or attacked in the media. Also, I want to note that many idols on variety shows share that they would go to the bathroom and eat quickly because if the management sees them eating, they would take away their food. Momo's story is really heartbreaking. It shows how cruel the industry is, and nowadays the standards are even less welcoming. 
Actually, the same example of Hwasa's story can be given right now too, because they also gave her skin color being too dark as a reason for her not debuting in the group. Can you please inform us about this topic? Of course, this is called whitewashing. I know it sounds so silly, but really it is a major thing for K-pop idols. Let me explain. Idols are more popular and considered more beautiful if they have a light complexion. And no matter how white the idols are, fans who are able to see them during fan signs, which is basically a meet and greet or concerts or any other event, all the photos they upload of them are extremely edited and whitewashed. It's actually insane. Some idols that get whitewashed a lot and aren't liked by people because of their natural melatonin are RM of BTS, Johnny from NCT 127, Kai, a former member of EXO, now soloist, Sana of TWICE, Leah of ITZY, and honestly, I'm just going to say all of the idols. And if you look up some Korean skincare brands, there are a lot of products that are whitening creams, whitening serums, and more. So they are basically indirectly promoting the idea that being whiter is better and prettier. Yeah, the skincare brands are trying to subliminally make people accept that white skin is the normal one and any skin color besides that should be fixed. I don't actually think that they are trying to hide their judgmental stereotypical thoughts about other skin colors, but it is very scary how fast whitewashing became a trend, even to a level now that the idols are getting hate when they don't edit their photos to become whiter. But what exactly do these companies do? Some idols also get their faces whitewashed and their facial features edited to quote, look better in the photo shoots they do for other brands. For example, Stray Kids were ambassadors for the skincare brand Nasific for two years and they modeled for their products from time to time. And one specific member I will focus on is Chan. He gets extremely whitewashed and they even edit his nose to look thinner and smaller. It's actually heavily edited that if you go to his Instagram and compare his photos to those that Nasific edited, they look like completely different people. Everyone is so aware that these photos are edited, but they don't make any comments about these photoshopping skin color trend since it is very normalized in the industry. Sometimes it doesn't end with whitewashing since a lot of netizens make degrading comments about their visuals not being good enough for them to become musicians. I totally agree with you. And with this point that you just made, I will talk about the third thing related to these beauty standards, plastic surgery. Of course, being extremely underweight isn't enough if you don't have the perfect face, right? Almost all idols get plastic surgery to look more aesthetically pleasing and perfect. And no, the age does not matter because Chun Lo from NCT Dream was 14 years old when he was about to debut and his company, SM, advised him to get plastic surgery, but he declined because he was too young and afraid. Knowing that minors are getting told to get plastic surgery and some of them even going under the knife is actually really messed up. A girl group, Aspa, also under SM, have had wild rumors about them that the company forced and peer pressured them into getting plastic surgery done. And I just want to mention that although it is the idol's personal choice to agree to get plastic surgery or not, it is upsetting to think that you need to change a lot of yourself because your company says you'd look better and be liked more. Now, some of the surgeries a lot of idols get are double eyelid surgery, nose jobs, jawline surgery, Botox and fillers, facial contouring, and more. As you said, there are a tons of surgeries that they feel like they need to do just to please netizens so they can achieve their dreams. This is really messed up. No one should feel like they need to change their appearances to live their dreams. But unfortunately, the industry is getting more and more strict about these beauty standards. Some idols who feel comfortable are now talking about these sad realities, which results in more awareness. And I really hope that everyone can be accepting of others, no matter their physical appearance.
As we come to the end of today's podcast, I want to thank everyone who explored this topic with me and the Shams. Beauty standards is a very sensitive topic, but it definitely should be talked about. Therefore, I want to remind everyone that this conversation doesn't have to end here. Discussing the subtopics that were talked about today with your friends, family or classmates can make a real difference in raising awareness. I feel so, so lucky to having the chance to talk with Shams. Thank Thank you. I was really happy to be here and to talk about this. It was actually really fun and I hope people like it. It was my pleasure. Well guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe. I would like to remind everyone that I changed my name from K Talks to K Pop with Kyla. So to reach the previous episodes, you can search it by K Talks. Until the next time, stay safe and stay healthy. This is Kyla signing off.